All right, we're back. We're on page 187. Uh, in the previous video, we were talking about, maybe a little quickly, maybe not. I mean, if you need to, you can go back and watch it, try again. Uh, there are more practice problems probably in the problem sets and just like you can make up anything you want and it'll definitely, almost definitely work. Um, definitely if you do it on GeoGebra, just make two line segments that intersect on GeoGebra and then decide like to go from one point to another point in a certain amount of time, another point to another point in a certain amount of time you will always be able to solve that like because you're looking at the solution as you do it. So um, make up your own, try them out, get really good at this process. The process is you figure out when they intersect and from when you figure out where the paths intersect because they're almost never there at the same time. Right here, they were there at four and six. They missed each other by two seconds. The intersection point, the point where the paths cross, like where two roads come together was five, four, but the first car went through at four, the second car went through at six, no danger. Um, and the second problem, uh, they crashed, so it was dangerous. They both got to the intersection point at one, that's totally fine, and then the intersection point was at six, nine. So in the event that they don't crash, right, if you crash, the minimum distance between you is zero, you crashed, like, sorry. If they don't crash, the question we wanna answer is, when are the objects closest to each other and how close do they get? Right, because that's like a really important question. So let's see if we can figure out how to use the distance formula of these things. So, excuse me. First part, find the distance between two points. Like, are you kidding me? All right, so, uh, or find the magnitude of the vector from this point to this point, whatever you want. Oh my gosh, excuse me. Um, that's what happens when you drink a can of soda in between videos. Like, you shouldn't do that. I knew I shouldn't do it, but it was there. Uh, all right, so distance formula here. 11 minus two squared, 10 minus six squared. I can't believe it's even asking me this. That's nine squared, that's like delta x um, squared. And then delta y is plus four squared, plus five squared. So what do you got, 18, no, 81 plus 16, 91, 97, radical 97. So that's how far apart they are. Okay, so that's like the magnitude of, like we knew that, come on. Uh, all right, well, what if it's a little more interesting? What if particle A moves according to the parametric equations, three T plus one and then negative T squared plus five. What does this look like? Well, uh, if this is X, right, which it is, it's like X one, this is Y one. So you could say that X is like uh, the T rather is x minus one over three, and then plug that in here. This is just quadratic, so that's it's something like that. Um, no, it's quadratic that opens down, so it's something like this. Uh, the other one, a little weirder, perhaps. Uh, let's say, why would I say, hold on, why would I say that's y2 when it is obviously y1? This is x2, this is y2. Okay, so here, this is a cubic, this is a linear, so what's that gonna look like? Well, you could, what could you do? Um, I think it's, it's gonna look like, this is a cube rather, not a cubic. Well, no, a cubic. Cube, what am I confusing here? Cubic. I don't know what I'm confusing. I'm, I'm confusing it with cube root, which is something that I'm gonna say in a second. So if you uh, said y is equal to that, then t is equal to y minus 12 over negative five then you plug it in here, you get x is negative six, blah, 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 y cubed, right? So then y is the cube root of x. It's like a cube root. So it's, it's kind of like this, I think. It's either, it's either like this. Yeah, I think it's like, I think overall the picture is going to be like this and also this. And we're trying to figure out how close they get. That's, that's what I think. Well, is there any reason that you can think of that we can't just plug these into the distance formula? I'm here to tell you there is no reason you can't do that. So let's do that. Let's say that the distance as a function of t is going to be the square root of, we're going to go with x, ah, x2 of t minus x1 of t squared plus y2 of t minus y1 of t squared. I think that's going to give us the distance formula. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go to, uh, let's go to the calculator. And do the calculator thing in like basically the same way. So I'm gonna, I'll just start a new, uh, a new, uh, I'm inclined to start a new document actually. New document. All right, go to the graph page. 
change it up, menu three, four, and then punch these in. So three T plus one, negative T squared plus five. What should we do here? I don't know, zero, zero to 10 or something? Uh, maybe negative 10 to 10? I really don't know. I don't know like what the picture is supposed to look like, so hard to say. Negative 10 to 10. All right, so we get our downward facing quadratic, which is what I was kind of expecting. The next one is like the weirder one, negative six plus t cubed, and then 12 minus five t. I think this is gonna look like a cubic. No, a cube root, That's, I keep confusing those, cube root, so like, uh, does it? Um, hold on, hold on. Let's go negative 10 to 10. Or negative 100 to 10. I don't think it really makes a difference. Yeah, this looks kind of, okay, so it's a negative cube root. So I got that part wrong. This is sort of what I was expecting. So we're looking for two things that are moving along this. And we want to find the minimum distance between them at any time. I don't know. Um, the key thing is that, that now they're entered into here. So what we can do is I'm going to add a calculator page, doc for option three in the same problem. If you go to a different problem, they won't be saved in the var key and that doesn't do you a lot of good. All right. I need to put in the distance formula, but I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to say D of T. So distance as a function of T colon equals, I'm going to use vectors. I'm going to use uh, menu seven, seven, the norm. And then my vectors going to be, uh, I'm going to do, so a vector x2 of t, comma, y2 of t, minus uh, a vector, and then x1 of t, comma, y1 of t. Kind of cheating. So if I press d of t, you know, d of t, just what is d of t? It's this thing. Okay. So I can then, I can use this to find uh, like the distance when t is equal to two. So when t is equal to two, what's gonna happen is you plug two in here, two in here, you get an ordered pair. Plug two in here, plug two in here, get an ordered pair. Find the delta x and the delta y, find the norm of that vector, that's gonna give you the distance. So here is the distance when t is equal to two. So uh, um, I don't know if you believe that, let's see. So here's the point and then Here's the other point. And then if I find the distance, it'll be the square root of x minus x is five squared, and then plus uh, y minus y is one squared, and then square root that. So I get the same value. And this, I must've hit control enter because it should've given me, yeah. So it's giving, that's the distance. So we can find the distances. So now what's nice about this is that d of t is a function. So I can just use it. I can do d of five, I can do d of 12. So these are the, uh, let's go with decimals on these. d of five, really far apart, d of 12. So we get um, at t equals two, you get the square, well, it was square root 26, but we're gonna go with 5.099 at t equals five. We're gonna go with, um, 103.238, so I'm writing these down. And at t equals 12, we're gonna go with, they're like incredibly far apart, 1687 point. So the question is, is it 460 or is it 455? So three decimal places matters. All right, so uh, we can do this. We can enter the distance formula. I prefer to use vectors. Um, let me switch back over to the notes. I'll write that down. And then I think what I'll do is cut this video, come back in another one and do the next problem. Cause I want to like talk about it and I don't want to like do that at the end of the video. Uh, so what I did here was I use vectors. So you can use vectors, right? So I found the magnitude of X two of T I two of T minus x1 of t, y1 of t. I believe that that is a faster thing to do on the calculator. I don't actually know. I mean, I'm pretty sure that it is. It's definitely faster on the computer version of the calculator because uh, you just don't have to type as much. Like you don't have to like worry about parentheses and then squaring because everything's like in a vector. 
and vectors are like self-contained and work, just distribution and everything like works on them. So I think it's better, but you know, you, you may have a different opinion. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is stop this here, come back in the next one and work on this next problem. So I will see you there.